What's up everyone? It's Steven and I hope you're all doing all right. If you're stuck at home with family and loved ones, hopefully they're not driving you too crazy. And if you're like me and you're stuck at home alone, hopefully you're just trying to stay as sane as possible. In this video, I'm going to be giving you nine Adobe Lightroom tips that every beginner should know about before they even start editing their first photo. With these tips, you're going to be able to take your good photos and make them great. You're going to be able to take any photo and make it that much better. And you're really going to see how each of these tips can really change the entire outlook of a photo. So on that note, let's get into it. My first Adobe Lightroom tip that all beginners should use is the auto settings. If you're a beginner that's never used Lightroom before, Opening the program itself can be extremely intimidating. There's so many buttons and tools that you can use that just looking at all your options can really be a bit overwhelming. And because it's so overwhelming, it's gonna be difficult to understand exactly where you should start. Some of you may even be looking at a photo in Lightroom and think to yourself, eh, I don't really think this needs to be touched up much at all. I don't even think it needs any kind of editing. Although that may be true, for the most part, it's not, so you're probably gonna need to do some sort of editing to your photo. The edits you may be making may not be extreme, but these tiny adjustments can really take your photos to the next level. And this is where the auto settings button is really gonna come in handy. Once you click that button, you're gonna have a great starting point so you know where you might wanna take your photo with the editing that you're gonna do. When you click on that button, Lightroom is gonna edit the photo how it sees that it should be edited. Now, although the auto button does give you a good starting point, it's not gonna always be perfect. And because of this, you're really gonna have to go in and try and make some small adjustments here and there. So think of the auto setting button as a big push in the direction that you should be heading for your edit. Especially if you're a beginner, because once you have that starting point, things become much easier from there. This is a button that can be used to very easily speed up your workflow. I know as a beginner, it's hard to understand where to start, so your workflow might be a bit slower than you want it to be. Pushing the auto settings button is really gonna speed things up for you so that you're not losing as much time as you think. So again, if you're really not exactly sure where you wanna start with a photo when it comes to editing, start with auto settings. My second tip that I'm gonna give to you is to use the tone curve. The tone curve is something that I typically use after I've made my adjustments to all the light sliders. Using the tone curve just gives you greater control over those light settings. You're able to make those further adjustments to your darks and lights or your highlights and your shadows. So if you feel like you're getting that picture close to how you want it to look, but it's not quite there yet, using the tone curve can really take that photo over the edge. It can get it over the hump. Tone curve is something that you can also use to help balance out everything in your photo. Now there are other curves that you can use like the point curve and the color point curve to make further adjustments to your photo but color is something that you probably shouldn't worry about too much at the beginning of photo editing. For me, that's something that should really come at the end of your editing process if you feel like colors really need to be adjusted. However, since lighting is one of the most important aspects of any photo, using the tone curve should come towards the beginning of your editing process. And this is especially true if you feel like the regular light sliders aren't getting your photo to the point that it needs to be at. My third Lightroom tip that all beginners should be aware of is using the target adjustment within the color mixer. You basically have the freedom to manipulate specific colors however you want. The color mixer itself will allow you to manipulate colors however you want within your photo, but the color adjustment within the color mixer allows you to change these colors with much greater accuracy. You can go over any specific area in your photo and Lightroom will try to read what color that is, and once it does that, you're able to adjust that color however you want. So as you can see, when you go over to an area in your photo, a slider appears. You can adjust this slider, and as you can see, when you adjust the slider, every area in that photo that has that color changes as well. When you're within the color mixer, you're able to adjust the hue of those specific colors, the saturation of those colors, and the luminance of those colors. If you're not sure what those terms mean, hue is the color itself, Saturation is basically how much of that color is in the photo, and luminance is basically how light or dark that color is. This is a tool that can really take a photo from this to this. Hopefully you don't need to always make edits that extreme, but you can see the usefulness of the tool. My fourth Lightroom tip is to use the split toning tool. Split toning is gonna allow you to adjust the highlights and the shadows within your photo. However, instead of adjusting the light of the highlights and shadows, it's gonna affect the tint of those highlights and shadows. So when you think of a highlight, you probably think of a bright color. If you don't, you probably should. You can make that highlight in your photo a completely different color. 
If you wanted to, you can make it red, you can make it blue, you can make it green, you can make it whatever color you want. You have the option to adjust these highlights and shadows to whatever color Lightroom is offering you. So again, like the target adjustment in the color mixer, you can make extreme changes to your original photo. But hopefully you don't ever actually have to make an edit that extreme, but it's always nice to have that option if you need it. My fifth Lightroom tip that every beginner should know is the healing brush. The healing brush is a tool that should be used when you want to hide certain details or cover up small mistakes in your photos. So for example, when you look at this watch photo that I've been using this entire video, maybe you've noticed some flaws in the watch itself. Mostly if you pay close attention to the wristband, you'll see that it's not necessarily the cleanest. This is the perfect time to use the healing brush. And when you actually do use the healing brush, it's fairly simple to use. All you need to do is click on the tool, adjust the size of the cursor, and start clicking and dragging around the area that you want to quote unquote heal. When you do this, Lightroom actually tries to find an area that comes as close to the color of the area you selected as possible. And it places that area that you selected over your original blemished area. So when you think about it, the healing brush is essentially a band-aid. It may not be a perfect cover-up, but it hides the blemishes to the average consumer of your photos. My sixth tip is to make sure that you look at your Lightroom profiles. Lightroom profiles are essentially filters that you see on Instagram. If you ever try to post something on Instagram, then you know that when you're trying to post your photo or video, one of your first options before posting is to put a filter on that photo or video. Speaking of Instagram, you should follow me on Instagram at instagram.com slash dare to gram. Dare to capture was already taken, so I had to kind of switch things up when it comes to Instagram. And it's kind of annoying because the person that uses Dare to Capture doesn't really use it. It's a private profile and they have zero posts. So I'm a little annoyed by that. Anyways, that was my shameless plug. I'll see you guys on Instagram. Woohoo! But back to profiles. Lightroom does come with its own profiles that you can use. There are also a ton of different profiles that you can download from the internet. Some are free, some cost some money. I'm one of those people that are always looking for those free profiles, mostly because I'm not made of money yet. I think if you guys saw the type of car that I drove, then you would 100% agree that I'm not made of money. So if it's free, it's for me. But yeah, don't be scared to check out these Lightroom profiles. Lightroom profiles, like the auto settings button, can really give you a good starting point to your photo while you're editing. Profiles is also something that can really help you define what kind of photography style you want to have. So if you have a certain profile that you love to go back to over and over and over again, that is probably going to be your style and that makes your editing process that much easier in the end as well. My seventh tip is to always check the crop and rotate tool. I feel like in today's day and age, we all know exactly what crop and rotate do for our photos, so I don't really need to go into much details when it comes to that. But I will explain why this tool is so effective and why every beginner needs to really understand why they should use it. This tool allows you to really line things up within your photo. If you have an uneven horizon, you can use that tool, line things up perfectly that way. If you have items or subjects in your photo that are slightly off center or not in the place that you think they should be, you can use that tool to adjust things and get them to where they need to be. Obviously things aren't always going to be perfect, but you can use this tool to try and get things as close to perfect as you possibly can. Another cool thing about this tool is that within it, you can check how your photo would look in different aspect ratios. So you can see how your photo would look in a nice little rectangle, a, a perfect square, a, other different aspect ratios, but this is a tool that I don't use as much, but I can see how it could be very useful for certain people. It's little adjustments with tools like this that can really take your photo to the next level. My eighth Lightroom tip for beginners is to take advantage of the linear gradient tool. A gradient is something that gradually changes as you move along the gradient itself. Just thought I'd mention that in case you didn't know what a gradient was. A perfect use for a linear gradient is going to be when you take a landscape photo and you want to change the, how the sky looks. You might have a decent looking sky in your landscape photo, but using a linear gradient can really separate it from the rest of the other photos. Once you actually apply the gradient, you can essentially change everything you want about that gradient. So you can change the exposure, the colors, like I said, pretty much everything you want about it. And the next thing you know, you have a brand new looking sky while keeping everything else in your photo the way you want it to be. Now my ninth and last Lightroom tip that beginners should use is to take advantage of the radial gradient tool. The radial gradient is different from the linear gradient because the radial gradient is able to get a more localized area. So say you're taking a photo and you have the sun directly in the shot. 
You can take a radial gradient, place it around the sun, work your magic, and all of a sudden you have a completely different looking photo because the sun looks entirely different. This tool works exactly the same as a linear gradient, but it's just used in a different way. And there you have it. Those are my Lightroom tips that all beginners should know before they even start editing their first photo. These are tools and tips that as you use Lightroom more and more, you're gonna understand them better and better. But knowing them now can really help your workflow and put you on an accelerated path to creating greater photos. So, if this is a video that you liked and you enjoyed all of these tips, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. If you have any Lightroom tips that you feel beginners should know right away before they even jump into the program, leave a comment below. And again, be sure to check out my Instagram. I guarantee if you follow me, you're gonna see some cool stuff there and down the road, you're gonna see some even cooler stuff. And since you're still here, I'll be nice enough to put up some more videos so that you can check those out as well, if you haven't already. I'll put one here, and I'll put one here. So until the next video, I'm Steven, take it easy. Peace.